which operates similar to a coffee shop. Okay. Um, you know, this is something that we, uh, is just a reminder to everybody, regardless of what your meal plan is or how many swipes you have, you can use it on the week, weekends and weekdays. So everything resets after dinner on Sunday evening. So say you don't, you have a five day a meal plan, meaning you have those 15 swipes, but you don't necessarily eat breakfast every day, but you want to be able to come in and eat brunch on you know, Saturday and Sunday, you are able to do that, okay? Um, in here in the marketplace or in the dining hall, it, we run it as though it's an all you can eat. So there's several different sections that they can come in and there's always gonna be something where there's something that is healthy and nutritious and filled with vegetables and, pro and a lean protein. And then we also offer things like pizza and hamburgers and stuff that are more of, of a comfort food. We run a, a full salad bar, a breakfast bar in the morning, Monday through Friday, uh, where they can get yogurt and fresh fruit and uh, create their own cereals and, and items like that. And then we do always have a station that is a cooked order station or a show station where we are, we try to make as many modifications to that meal as possible regarding what it is that they would like their choice to be. So maybe it's somebody that's a vegetarian, um, but would like to stir fry tonight. We can do that with, with tofu instead of chicken and that kind of thing, okay? Um, all of the meal swipes also come with what we call flex dollars. Uh, flex dollars were, came in an increment amounts of $100 and $200, depending on which plan that you got. That money is able for them to go and buy things like um, a, a Starbucks Frappuccino out at the bistro, or if they need a box of cereal because they don't really like getting up too early in the morning and they need to be able to eat before they go to class, they can come and, and get a full box of cereal and a half gallon of milk and be able to keep that in their room. Um, this is a, a just an example of what our locations and hours are. Uh, we have found generally that most of the students here on campus don't like to get up very early on the weekends. So that's why we offer brunch. When we do offer brunch, there's always a breakfast item, but items like scrambled eggs and bacon and uh, cereal and French toast and, and things like that. There's also during brunch, there will also be a hot protein and vegetable and uh, salad bar. So depending on what's is going on with your student, whether they are early riser or they like to do things a little bit later, we try to accommodate their dining needs. Um, a few of the questions that I, I've always gotten asked, are you as a parent able to come in and, and eat with your student? Absolutely, we encourage that. We want as many parents here as we possibly can get. Um, so if you do want to like to come and join, uh, especially during that weekend of move-in, and you can come in and see what's going on, have a meal with your, your student. I have listed the prices for the door rates there for you. Um, we do have mobile apps that are available to be able to get things like a uh, an order to go, just similar like you would at Starbucks, our bistro offers that. So if a student is running really late that day or, or just is in a rush in between classes, they can get an order ready to go in the bistro area, stop by, pick it up real quick on their way out. Um, if for whatever reason, anybody runs out of swipes, flex or sand dollars, um, sand dollars is something that is meant for somebody that does not have like either a credit card or, or a debit card, because we are a cashless campus. We do offer a thing called sand dollars where uh, yourselves can put some money on a card for your student to be able to use anywhere on campus, whether it's with dining or in the bookstore or laundry or, or anything of that nature. If they do run out of those uh, funds, they are able to go onto a thing called Blackboard e-accounts and they can check in that way. They can log in and they can see how many swipes they've got left a week. They can look and see um, how much their flex is that they spent. Um, if, they're, if you're asking them how they're doing and they're not sure, that's a good recommendation for them to be able to go on and say, oh yeah, we've got, I've got this much left until the end of this month. Here's a, 
here's an example of where they can use a swipe versus flex money. Uh, flex money is, they can pretty much use it anywhere um, food related on campus, whether it's a vending machine, food truck, uh, in the dining hall. Uh, swipes are limited to three places here on campus, which are the marketplace, the bistro, and Morrow Cove. Um, so anything that is is considered like an extra, like a food truck or, or vending, we, we do have it. So they're only able to use their flex, but they should never be able to, uh, they should always be able to eat because they'll be able to use their flex. Their, I'm sorry, their swipes in order to be able to do so. Uh, we are all about trying to educate people through mobile applications as much as possible. Um, we, I have four here that will give you um, kind of an idea of what uh, we have going on. If you are interested in what it is that your student had options to eat that night for dinner, um, the Everyday app is a free app that is able to, you're able to download it will tell you exactly what is on the menu for that day. If we have it run for over, about a week out in advance, um, it has everything from the nutrition, uh, you know, calorie count, allergen information, um, uh, that kind of thing. It will help them, guide them if they do have any kind of uh, nutritional needs that they are having direct questions about or last minute, they can go to that everyday app. Uh, Transact is what we use for a mobile ordering at the Bistro. The Blackboard e, e account is for them to check their deposits, balances, things like that. Um, and then Grubhub, simply by using their campus email when they sign up for Grubhub, it automatically allows them to be able to go on use Grubhub without any delivery fees. Um, and they can do that when they go home or um, you know, if they're on a trip or something like that, it's not necessarily specialized or localized directly to the campus. It is just an option that they can get where they wouldn't be able to have, you wouldn't be able to have any of the uh, delivery charges applied even if you were to get that at home. Um, if you, they, they're going to want to do that, this is the basic sign up where they would go on and be able to just scan the QR code. Uh, all of this is stuff that we'll go over with your students when they come in to campus during that orientation week. And probably for about a week after that, we'll, myself and the folks that I work with will be down in the marketplace and, and throughout campus trying to guide them as they're going through and being able to get this information because they'll be on information overload, being able to continue uh, to, to give feed that information to them a little bit. Um, things that you can do for them. If you know that they got a birthday coming up or if you, you know, talk to them, maybe they're feeling a little lonely because it's the first time that they can, they're away from home. Um, we do offer a thing called care packages and it is simply you would reach out and contact us here in the dining center and we can get things together and, and get it to your student on your behalf. Um, we've had a lot of, of good uh, things that have come out of the birthdays, whether it's a birthday cake or cupcakes or balloons, um, to be able to help celebrate the students' birthdays here on campus. If you are needing something specialized or custom packaged, we can do that for you. You just need to walk through that uh, information. Um, we do ask if you are going to do that, that we you give us at least 72 hours so that we can make sure to make all the appropriate ar arrangements. Okay. Um, that's Pretty much it for the presentation. Uh, before the we go into some Q, a little bit of Q and A, I do want to say that I I hope that you follow. If you are on social media, I do hope that you follow the Dining Center on Instagram and Facebook. Um, it is a great way to know what's going on with how your students are eating and and having an opportunity to be able to see them doing fun things. Because we try to accommodate, we try to get stuff on there that is not only dining related, but other events and things that they have going on on campus. Um, if you have any questions or like that, there's an email address there um, that can get a hold of me and my team. There is uh, the website, which is also listed there, which uh, has some of this information that I've just shared with you on it. It also has other information from hours of operation to upcoming events to um, things that the students can go back and refer to. 
Uh, it also is the same uh, website is part of the campus website as well. So if you look up uh, uh, Marketplace on the campus website, that'll take you directly to, to the same one. And with that, Benita, I will, uh, I'm good for some q and A. If I've got any questions going on. You're, Benita, unfortunately you're on mute. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to um, speak through the, the three areas that Karen mentioned. We use those words all the time. So I wanted to, if it's okay with you, Karen, just let sure. the families know that what we call the marketplace is our la large dining center uh, where we have several stations where they can get different types of food. And it's got um, three levels. Uh, mostly students, when they come in and pick up their food uh, from, you know, they line up and get their food, they can sit down at the lowest level, the first floor. The second floor is really a mezzanine and there's additional seating there that they can utilize. And the, the third floor or second floor uh, really is what we call the compass room, which is mostly reserved for um, act, um, events. So that building has those three floors and um, the majority of their food is going to be provided through the um, marketplace. It's fairly large and it accommodates all our students. Um, the Bistro is our fun cafe, which is where you get your Starbucks fixed. And uh, there are some sandwiches, some takeaway foods, and sometimes there's soup there or uh, some uh, special offerings um, and they can as Karen pointed out, you can order ahead and it'll be ready for them to pick up and run to class, which is what often happens. And then what we call the co marketplace cove or cove marketplace is uh, really a convenience store. It's very similar to what a 7-Eleven might have cheese sticks and ham slices and snap pickle things, which are really yummy. Um, and things like that. They can buy eggs and milk and blueberries kind of a thing. Uh, what they, like Karen had mentioned, they can leave in their fridge in the, in the room. There's some also some non-perishables like ramen or make your own oatmeal kind of packages um, so they can uh, stock up. So just wanted to kind of give a brief description of the three areas where food is available. Sadly, um, outside the campus, there aren't very many other food options. Um, nothing to do with Karen and her operation. I just want families to know that we are amid what we have overused, I think, uh, a food desert. So the closest thing is a, a McDonald's, which is about a mile and a half, I think. Um, not recommended to walk there, but you know, that's the closest thing. Anything else is a few miles away. So just uh, so you can get a feel for what uh, is available to your student. Uh, that's why Grubhub and uh, Karen and her team's ability to make that delivery fee go away is uh, a huge thing. Uh, students can order Grubhub food when at odd hours or when they have a desire to eat just pizza and nothing else kind of thing. Um, with that, um, Karen, do you want to add anything to what I just said? No, not at this point. I, I do want to make sure whatever questions there are get answered so that okay. I'm not able to. Perfect. So the first question is, where is this meeting going to happen? So, Rita, I'm not sure which meeting you're referring to, but if um, at the end you want to um, unmute and ask that question with, so I have some context, I'd be happy to do that. Um, and then we have, is the cadet available on Sunday? I suppose you're talking about the Sunday after move-in, which is August 18th. The cadet is, uh, I don't want to say they're not available because they will have gone through their first day of orientation till about six o'clock, which is when they'll uh, have their food and such. And after that, we'll have some fun activities for them, um, options um, for the next couple of hours. So around 8.39, they should really be getting back to their room because they are starting their days pretty early at 7.20. So um, your student will be available in the evening if you want to connect with them, if you want to take them out and get them dinner with you, you're very welcome to schedule that with them. We don't, we, we, 
We don't encourage it too much because uh, this is their time to bond with their cohort, but they're welcome. They're not like, there's no curfew or there's nothing like that. You can take them out uh, when their orientation uh, sessions are ended around six o'clock. Um, I hope that answers your question. If not, stay back and then we can hatch it out, hash it out some more. Um, next question is, will you be able to share your slide deck with the meeting participants, Karen? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, so if you can send that to me, what I'll do is when I have the request, I finally was able to figure out what was going on with the recording. So it will start abruptly, but it'll be posted on the on a web page that I've shared with families where it will be posted. Um, and right there, I'll also post this uh, um, this PowerPoint. So just send it to me when you get a moment. Okay. Yeah. Um, I put in the calmaritimedining.usa uh, email in there so you guys can, uh, families can um, copy and paste and put it in wherever you'd like so that you have it for when uh, you want to send a care package or have a question for Karen or her team. So easier to copy and uh, paste from here. Uh, email address for care packages. So that's the one I added, calmaritime.usa at SEDEC. So our meal plan plans required. If you live on campus, then yes, it is required. If you are not living on campus, then it's it's not. There is a petition process to uh, get so you don't live on campus, and the meal plan would follow that to the same as the housing. Um, if I may, Karen, um, any student who is um, has requested to live off campus, has petitioned it, and has been approved, they can buy a meal plan. Correct. Okay. Um, but it doesn't work the other way around. If you're on campus, you it's not an option. You must pay for the meal plan. Um, does the meal plan carry a uh, carry over to the Golden Bear training cruises, or will it will that cost more? Unfortunately, it does not carry over that will be a separate charge. Um, Karen, is the charge included in the cruise fee or is that on top of the cruise fee? I believe so, but I, I'm not sure. To be honest. So that's my understanding as well, that your total cruise fee that you pay as a summer term uh, will include the meals that are part of the cruise. Um, but this meal plan doesn't apply to that uh, summer course. Uh, can an athlete get a to-go meal if they are not on campus during meal times? Uh, okay, athletes can do a couple of things. They are always able to use the meal exchange in more of a market or at the bistro to be able to get a to-go meal. A lot of the coaches, though, with the athletic department will reach out to us and have what they call a team meal and where we'll put stuff to go for the team itself. And that's just all coordinated through the athletic uh, coach and, um, and ourselves. And so it could be that their meal swipe, if they are, let's say, have an away game, their meal swipe is already taken care of through that. Hopefully that was clear. But um, athletes will not be will not go hungry because they can't sit down and have a meal. There is an option available to them. Um, at are there refrigerators in the dorm rooms? There are refrigerators in the dorm rooms, but they're very small. They are about the size of a hotel refrigerator, so keep that in mind. Yeah. So it's a dual unit. It's a, a refrigerator at the bottom, and then it has a microwave on top. Both small. Um, so there are refrigerators, the dorm question mark, or do we need to buy our own? So you don't need to, they are given the dual unit. Um, do we have access to a full kitchen or just a microwave and mini fridge? We do have access to a full kitchen. There is one on every dorm room floor and it's kind of a shared space. So they, they are able to go in and, and cook if they would like to, but it's not something that is in their dorm room. 
So are we talking about upper res, Karen? Because all the students here are going to do upper res. I don't believe there's cooking ability in upper res. Is there? From my understanding, they have that small communal area. Okay. There are probably very limited options for cooking. So um, I wouldn't overly rely on that option. So if you have uh, any specific needs that your student has, which is gonna, which is why you're asking, it's best to do a one-on-one -on -one outreach to Karen to find out what other options are available. Um, next question, uh, or oh, is this uh, regarding the uniforms? So Irina, I think, um, oh, I lost your question. Do we have access to a full kitchen after that? It is regarding swipes. If on, uh, if you only got a soda later in the day, would that be considered a swipe? Every time that they come into, once they come into the marketplace or the dining hall, they can eat as much as they want while they're in there. But if they leave, then it would cost them that it would go as another a second. Um, so for drinks, if they all they wanted was a drink or a soda, they would uh, would they could go to the bistro or they could go to the market, uh, the cove. Um, and in Moro Cove, uh, which is a building where um, there are a couple of vending machines that provide some uh, drink options as well. Yeah, um, their and their flex dollars would work on the vending machine. Yeah. Or they could just put coin in. Um, can students cook for themselves? We kind of covered that. Uh, when and what time is the meeting when students get their uniforms? So uniforms, the initial uniform pickup is going to be at the, the time slot that housing gives you. So if they say your um, housing slot is 7 a.m., then you will arrive a few minutes before 7, come to PIAC, pick up your initial uniforms uh, at 7, and head over to... Um, to your dorm. And it's best to try out any questionable looking sizes and make sure that they work. Or if they don't work, you'll have the option to come back down between four and 6.30 back to PIAC and make that exchange. If you ordered a size 10 and you put it on and it's too big for you, bring the 10 down and just swap it for an eight, okay? Um, so those are your times. Your slot for coming in is when you do the initial pickup and, and then exchange from 4 to 6.30. Um, is there sort of like a grocery store kind of thing on campus or do you have to go off campus? The Morro Cove Market pretty much is the grocery store on campus. Um, we do, there's everything in there from a frozen seaweed dinner to fresh fruits and vegetables. So there is quite a bit of a variety in there. It's all based on what the students are buying. So if we get requests for things, we will bring it in. And then if we have items that don't sell, then they will go away. Um, the closest grocery store is a few miles away. So your, your option, if they didn't find something that they're looking for at uh, Marketplace, uh, they would uh, they would need to use either find a friend who has a car to get there or they would have to find some way of like instant cart kind of a delivery. Um, while we're talking about that, we um, when you meet PD, they'll uh, health and safety, they'll remind you and for you to talk with your students that if they are going to have these deliveries, it's best to utilize the front of the police department or services building to do those kinds of exchanges for to maximize your safety. Um, just a side note on that. Um, I don't know if my son registered for dorms yet. When does he have to register for his meal plan? You, the you meal plan is attached to registering for the dorm. Or the deadline goes, I, Benita, I don't know. Yeah, so there's no separate registration. Every student is automatically going to be part of the residential and uh, meal plan. Should they have 
Should they want to live off campus and therefore not have a meal plan? That's a whole process. And the deadline for that is done. And all the waivers have either been already um, given or de denied. So that process is completed. Your son didn't need to do anything more or different. They should be all right. If you want to discuss this more, send me an email at orientation at csum.edu with your specifics, and I'll do my best to follow up. Uh, are we allowed to have a coffee machine in our dorm room? Want me to take that? Um, so this is a housing question, but it's easy, so I'll let you know. Any open flames or those kinds of um, items or appliances are not allowed. Coffee machines are safe and they can bring them. They want to be very careful. It's a limit. It's a dorm room. This is very different from living at home where there's more space. So be mindful of all the gizmos that they want to or you want to send or they want to bring. Um, so check with their roommates. So if one person's bringing a rice cooker, then the, you know the other one can bring a coffee machine and things like that. Um, same thing with Keurig. Yes, you can have a Keurig in your room, but again, limited space. It's not an open flame, so you're going to be okay bringing a Keurig machine if you have the space. Um, if you want to know more details about that, please save your questions for the housing date. We have uh, a wonderful team that's going to be on um, on that for that session and can take a lot of questions. Can student have a blender in their room? Same as as the coffee machine, yes, but be mindful. Could you clarify the small fridge is one per dorm room or one per person? Do you know, Karen? One per room. One per room. So they have to really get along with their roommate. Um, could you clarify if the small fridge, oops, I read that. When do we receive our housing block times? Um, it will be pretty late this month or early August. Uh, we're getting these um, compatibility questionnaires from students who are putting their information into a platform called Star Res. And then our uh, housing team starts to match people up. They get their division. So it's a pretty um, complicated, um, complex, I should say, complex process. And we try to match students with like-minded uh, individuals so they can get along and they're in the same division. So all of those things take time. You can expect your time uh, frame somewhere close to early August. Um, can a student get a soda outside the marketplace and bring it into the marketplace? They cannot. They can bring it in, but they have to swipe in order to be able to come in. Now, if they're just wanting to come hang out with their friends, then that's where we have other locations for that. There's a lot of room to hang out in, in Morro Cove, uh, the B-stress tables where everybody can go in and out. And so if they just want to get a drink and, and be able to chat with their friends, there's a great place to be able to do that. But if they're wanting to come into the marketplace, they've got it quite. Uh, I'm breaking my own rules. Um, when are you allowed to have a car? That's a question when you have parking and PD, but I'll let you know that we encourage first year students to not bring cars. We want them to stay on campus and not be going home every chance they get or off campus every chance they get. Um, we have limited parking spaces. So that's, that's another reason for discouraging students from bringing cars, but should they need to bring a car, um, they can check in with PD to see if they can get a permit and uh, bring it in, bring a car in their first year, but definitely sophomore and future years past that time, uh, students can have cars. It's only in their freshman year that we really want them to focus on campus life. Uh, please confirm students move in on the 17th and not the 14th. <clears throat> per the academic calendar posted on the, that's where that 14 date is coming from. I had no idea why there was so much confusion because um, anytime you put orientation, it should only show you 17. Thank you, Lisa, for letting me know where that 14 date is coming from. Um, yes, you are absolutely right. Move in is 17 and no sooner. I will go back and fix it 
on the calendar. Uh, electric water heater is okay. I don't know. Question for housing folks. That one's a little iffy. Let, let them answer it. Can we replace the door? No, we can't have you bring in um, your own unit because of liability reasons. And if everyone did it, then everyone wants to do it. And we already have a contract with those uh, units. So we can't um, change that out. Where is the link for what to bring as a first year student? Great question. Um, if you go to uh, the orientation page, it's there. I've linked it just today. Um, and I, if you don't find it, email me orientation at csum.edu and I'll be happy to send it directly to you. <clears throat> Can you please tell me the date of the school start? 21st of August is first day, um, is the first day of instruction. Um, I don't know why you would want to take your take a day off on the first day of school. Um, I'm not sure. But first day of school, when your students will be in class, uh, is the, the 21st of August. So you arrive here on the 17th. Students have orientation uh, sessions on 18, 19, 20. And on 21st, they're in class. Approximately how many new students? We're expecting a class of 253 as of today. That might be, we're hoping, fingers crossed, to bring in a few more students, but that's about the number that we're looking at. Um, is there a freezer in the community cooking room? There is not. If you have very specific concerns about your student needing access to a freezer, please email uh, orientation at csum.edu with your exact concerns. And between Karen and us and others, we could potentially find some way to accommodate that need, maybe, but if we know more, we can help out. Karen, does that sound about right? Yeah, that, that sounds great. If you do have a student that has like severe allergies or, or does have, if you're really worried about what it is that they're eating, um, we meet with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis all the time, and we work really well with the our disability coordinator. And so we've been able to make quite the accommodations to be able to help the students be able to navigate it, even if it were down there helping them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Give me a second. And please, um, I have a question where you can find the academic calendar. Here's the link for that. And if you ever have a question, I would love for you to reach out to me. I'm very happy to answer your questions, connect with you anytime. Uh, my cell phone number is out there and you can text me. There's Facebook and all of that good stuff. However, please, if you're uh, looking for something and you know exactly what it is or have a sort of an idea of search keywords, just put it in the search of our uh, general website and see what pops up. You might be surprised with some of the answers you can find very quickly on our website, um, but that is in no way uh, to discourage you from reaching out to me. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Um, I'm going to go back a little bit. Um, when do parents need to leave campus? Whenever your heart desires, when you're ready to let your student go. Uh, but um, the, the big thing that you'll have is capping ceremony on uh, Saturday, which should conclude by 3.30, 3.45 at the latest. And then I'll sing a song, let it go and give you lots of tissues and say goodbye. Um, but jokes aside, that's about the last thing that you really need to be involved in. Um, if you wish to leave any sooner, you can do that as well. Um, if you are not there during the capping ceremony, many of us uh, find that we it's an honor for us to cap your students. So faculty and staff come and stand around the quad um, and they will insert themselves in front of a student who might not have someone representing 
their family there to cap them. So if you have to go, you have other obligations, you can leave sooner than the capping ceremony um, and we'll take care of your student. Um, and if you're not taking them out for dinner, Karen will take care of your student by feeding them. Um, so don't worry about things like that. Um, and if you do want to stay a little longer, you're more than welcome to stay and join them for dinner as well. Yes. Um, thank you for that. Um, can students go home every weekend? Yes, but no. It's They're, they're uh, free to do so, but please discourage them. Um, from doing that because the start, the longer they stay here and you know create their new tribe and, and feel like they belong here it's just so much more um uh, it supports them and it's very important for their success uh to have that camaraderie and if they keep going home every weekend they lose those opportunities to be with their uh with with their peers um, so mom and dad, yes, you want them home uh, first few weekends. So you you can kind of wean yourself off them. I know because I had to do that with my son, um, but um, encourage them to stay put and do things on campus It's to, to get all of the experience. Um, I'm sorry if you already said that, but when is the capping ceremony? Um, the president will uh, have his opening or welcome remarks around 2.30, 2.45-ish. And then that'll be about 15, 20 minutes. And while you're inside, the students are practicing outside on how to be in formation. But then you'll come out and they'll be ready for you and you can cap them. So I would say that you'll be done with capping no later than 3.30-ish. Um, and we'll have that finalized. I'm still, we're still waiting for the cap, the, the president to confirm his welcome remark time. And as soon as we know that we'll have the schedule ready, um, <clears throat> picked up and dropped off. Um, they can go home. They can, you can pick them up and drop them off, but the idea is for them to get used to staying here, um, and staying with their, roommates and peers and make the most of their college experience. So if you can avoid that. Um, are we going to have a checklist for what is recommended? Um, checklist for what is recommended to bring to your room? Yes. If you type in orientation in the search, of our website, it'll bring you up to the orientation page. And just today at the very bottom of that page, I have um, attached a list. And if you email me at orientation at csum.edu, I'll send it directly to you. Um, can you link the packing list? Uh, yes, I can do that. Give me a second, Sean. Um, can you kindly answer these questions and post them as an FAQ sheet in case I forget to answer? All right. So, um, Sadly, we didn't capture the first few minutes, but the rest of this call, this session is now recorded and it will be posted on the Keelhaller family page. I've shared that link with you in the email I sent and I can continue to share that with you so you know where to go look for this session recording, but I am not able to commit to creating an FAQ um, of, this, of this session. Uh, much of what we've shared is available um, in on our website in some form or another. Oh, I have a tear. What happened, Peggy? Why the sad face? There's no reason to be sad. And I'm finding the link to what to bring to campus. Give me just a moment and I will put that in the chat so that you um, have it. All right, here you go. This is where you'll find the a document that says what you can, can bring and what we kind of uh, discourage you from bringing. Okay. Ooh, it's 621. And um, there are no other questions popping up. 
at the rate they were earlier. So if there is anyone on this um, on this Zoom session who was unable to type their question in, you're welcome to unmute now and um, ask your question verbally. Before we do that, I mean, I just, there is one question here regarding um, if a five meal plan started, can it be increased to seven days later? Absolutely. I'm sorry to have missed this question. Um, and I, this came up last year. So I wanted to um, just also point out that you cannot go backwards. So if you selected a seven meal plan and you decide that, oh, my student is not utilizing all their uh, meals, can I go backwards? That is not possible, right? Or is there a deadline, Karen? How can you help them? Generally, we give them the first three weeks of school. So I and I don't have that date off the top of my head. Um, if you look real quick, I, it will. I'm sorry. As, as of I'm sorry, I had to look at the date. As of September six, you're not going to be able to go down. So if you start off at at, at with a seven meal a week plan and you don't make a change before September 6th, then you have to continue it for the rest of the semester. If you can always at any point in time, increase it from a five to a seven. Okay, thank you, uh, Karen. Uh, Michael has a question. Michael, I don't know the answer to that question. What are the exact quantities of the uniforms uh, that are being provided? Um, I will get that for you. If you can do me a huge favor and email me at orientation at csum.edu, I'll get you the answer um, sent to you. Um, JP is asking, I was waiting to ask because it's not pertaining to meals, but is there anywhere the deadlines for things freshmen have to do is posted? Yes, if you uh, go to admissions, and search for um, a checklist, you'll find it there. Again, if you email me, orientation at csum.edu, I'll find that link and send it to you. Which type of vehicle has more available parking on campus, motorcycles or cars? Oh, wait for PD to answer that question. Uh, when will classes be assigned? So I'm told that June, um, July 29th through August 10th, is the window of time when your students will be block registered. More on that in one of the future uh, sessions, but your classes, your student doesn't need to register, we will register them. Uh, do kids get meals during vacation holidays? Mm, good question. Uh, everything's based on a semester schedule. So for instance, um, Veterans Day, Veterans Day is a holiday. We, what we do is we run a weekend schedule. So they would do have meals from like, we'll have brunch, but we won't have, won't be open early for breakfast. And then we'll offer dinner. The Bistro and Moro Cove will both be closed that day. When the semester ends, for instance, is when it's before Christmas. So the winter break, it, there wouldn't be meals available because of the fact that the semester had ended. Um, Thanksgiving, uh, Thanksgiving, we do go all the way through Wednesday, um, but Thanksgiving day, the day after that Saturday, uh, we are all closed and then we open back up Sunday evening for dinner. And that is, post, that, that's posted and there's communication that goes out to the students regarding all of that. Great, thank you, Karen. Um, Gokul, um, really appreciate you, uh, your patience. Please unmute and ask your question. Thank you so much, uh, Vinita. I am not sure whether you answered my questions. Luckily, my second question regarding vacation was answered, but the first question was, uh, could you put the answers to these questions into some FAQ format so that I'm an old guy, I keep forgetting and you know, I can get back and refer to it and say, oh, this is what we need to say. Okay, I did answer that. Um, so this session is being recorded. 
and I will post the recording on our website. I will share the link where it goes. So anytime you want to go back and listen to what was said, you'll have that option. And I highly recommend if you ever have a question, just put those keywords in our search on the website and you'll find the answers because we're not telling you anything that we also don't have in writing on uh, on our website. I cannot, sorry, commit to typing up all these questions into a uh, Q, uh, FAQ and then reposting it. Um, as part of the recording, um, it also collects the questions on the side um, in, in chat. So you will have access to those and you'll have the recording to fall back on. I hope that's uh, acceptable. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Of course, of course. Um, so you checked the checklist and it doesn't have deadlines. So JP, please uh, go ahead and send me an email and I'll find the information and get it to you with the deadlines and whatever your email requests, I'll follow up. Um, is an electric bike allowed? Yes. There isn't anything that uh, disallows that. So um, they'll have to be careful and make sure that they keep it safely and all of the good stuff, but um, they can. Um, when do parents need to leave? Parents can leave when they are ready to leave. Uh, the program for the last thing for on move-in day is capping ceremony, which should conclude by 3.30, uh, 3.45. After that, they can leave with their student to get a meal, do any last minute errands, or they can leave their student behind and get home for other duties as required. And we will feed your student and take care of them. Um, so there isn't a hard and fast time uh, for you to stay and for you to leave. So you'll be free to leave whenever it is that you need to leave. Uh, if your check-in time is 10 o'clock and you're checked in and your student is in a good place, all in their room, everything is done, you've taken care of them and you want to leave by 1130, you're welcome to leave at 1130. If you have any specific questions related to um, what your parent, what parents are going to be that day? Again, email me at orientation at csum.edu, and um, I'll be happy to respond. Anyone else wanting to unmute and ask a ask a question verbally before we? Close I out? do. Okay, Hi, my go ahead. My name is Ms. Woods. Hi. Um, I'm. I wanted to ask about students that may be coming in on the twelfth with the early summer uh program. Um, do you have any information on that and how it transitions right into um, right into the regular move-in date? Um, I don't have all the details. I'm going to be in a meeting um, next week that will have more details about that uh, EOP program if your student is participating in that. Um, what I can tell you is that they arrive on the 12th and they have very similar capping ceremony and uh, a moment with leadership and the students, the, the, your student, the 12th arrivals will have their own preliminary orientation and then they'll step right into the campus-wide um, orientation and they will then start classes on the 21st. Because they'll have had their capping done uh, already with their families, they can um, we can redo it. One of us is happy to be there on the 17th and cap them. Or if you wish to come back and cap them on the 17th, if you're local, uh, you're welcome to arrive, uh, you know, 2.30, 3 o'clock and um, be at formation and recap them. Is, is that helpful? Carla? Yes, it's, it's helpful. I just, I think you answered uh, the majority of that. I also wanted to know about times, will they be moving in to their dorm at that time? And like with their roommate, that sort of thing. And uh, yeah. Yes. So they will have their move in and also their um, you know, rooms allocated and all of that on the day they arrive. 
And I've made a note to at the next meeting, which is on Thursday, I will have the details for the EOP move in and schedule that I can share. But you sh your student will also be getting that information from um, the EOP coordinator. His name is Jalen. And so Jalen will be sharing more information with your student. But as a commitment to the families, I'll have a lot more detail for you on Thursday. Is that good? Wonderful, thank you. That means you have to join us back on Thursday, Carla. Um, I will. I will be back. All right. Um, I just wanted to take a moment. Uh, what is what in specific is EOP? Uh, EOP is Educational Opportunity Program. It is. Um, it is a a program that's designed for. Uh, first time, uh, first generation st college students. So if that, and, and there's a whole process that begins at the time that your student started to apply for college with CSU, they would have had to check a check off as an EOP, a first generation student with um, a very specific um, economical need to participate in that EOP program or EO program. Um, and if they didn't do that or didn't um, weren't eligible, then they can't start now. Uh, if you want more details, just put EOP in our um, search and you'll get a lot more detail about the program or you can email me directly. Uh, Michael, if that if you want more information. Um, I wanted to thank Karen for staying late into the evening to be with us and answer all these questions. So thank you. Um, Karen. And I also want to thank each and every parent who's here because your unconditional commitment to students is why they're joining college. So thank you for continuing your commitment by being here. And I will do this. Uh, I'll show gratitude to you every time we meet because uh, our partnership with families is very important to the success of our students. So Good job, and I will see you on Thursday. And anyone who wants to stay behind, please feel free. I'll stick around for a few minutes. Thank you again, Karen. Bye-bye. JP, did you get that? All right, we have just a few more people left. If you wanna unmute and ask your questions, turn on your video, let's have it. I, I was curious if there was anything specific for cadets, like any move-in times or anything like that. Um, move-in time for cadets for what? Uh, just uh, in general. Is it, uh, is it the same as normal students or is there an extra process that I need to be aware of? I'm not sure I understand your question. Are you an incoming freshman? Yeah. Yes. Uh, you will receive an email from housing at csum.edu that'll give you the time frame when you need to arrive on the 17th. And okay. you will arrive at that time and get into your room and um, follow the events of the day that will likely conclude between 3.30 and 3.45. Is that what okay. you were hoping to get? Yeah, okay, okay. thank you. Sure. Who's next? Oh, Michael's still here. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed somewhere on the website, I can't remember where, but there was a information about, I guess, at the end of the semester or um, at the end of Christmas break, the students need to move out and then they move back in when the classes start again in January. Is mm -hmm. that correct? That is correct. So um, they don't need to move out. They need to make sure their rooms are safe and, uh, you know, just 
cleaned up. Nobody's going to do an inspection, but they will, and then they'll go for summer. I mean, they will go for winter break. And when they come back, they'll go to the same room, but we need that need the rooms to not be a hazard of any kind. Um, so they need to clean up, but they need to, do, they don't need to move out. If you read the word move out from their dorm room, anywhere on the website, please send me that link so that I can address it. But I, I can't imagine it says that. You have to move out at the end of spring semester before summer. So in at the end of April, you will have to move out completely. You'll have to take all your belongings and go. When you come back for the new academic year, you bring it back. And you'll probably go into a new room, new okay. building. OK. OK, yeah? thank you. OK, Lori, you're next. Hi, my son had a question about the um, the shots um, required. He was a little confused about list. I, can you specify what you? It's it's on the website um, under the health forms. I know it, this will probably be talked about Thursday, yes. but um, since we have you here, if you knew exactly which uh, specific. Yeah. I, I don't have the specifics for health. These Based health on the health forms. Yeah. Uh, talk to health and safety folks when they're here, um, please. Because I don't want to get any one of us in trouble with me making up very reasonable or logical, uninformed answers. So Thursday, uh, one, two, days of, two days away, health and safety. Ask them. All right. Thanks. Sorry. Anyone else? I have another. Yeah. Oh, Irina, go first. Michael, you'll be at right after Irina. Yeah, actually, really, thank you so much for giving such a comprehensive review, not just on meals. I really okay. appreciate you answering all the questions. No uh, you said there is your phone number someplace, but I didn't see it in the chat. Where yeah. is your phone number? Yeah. Here it is. I put it in chat. You're, you're welcome okay. to have it. And you thank can you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you so Hi, much. Hi, I have a question. Do you have storage on campus in case you live on the other side of California? <laughs> storage. Um, right across from the campus, there's a storage facility. Um, so are you wanting to send some stuff ahead of you yourself? No, for summer, I, I live in Los oh, Angeles. Oh. <laughs> For summer, um, once you get here, you'll find that m most of your peers will have the same situation. So often what I've heard is students will rent one storage space, which is not far from, just literally across the street, and they'll share the cost of the storage space and everyone, you know, three or four friends will put stuff in one storage space. Um, the other thing they do is talk to a student who might be living in a home and has their garage and for 10 bucks, They'll let you put a few of your things in the garage. So I've seen that happen with stu students sometimes. Um, if uh, What's your major, Michael? Uh, international Business and Logistics. Okay, so a little bit different. So yes, you'll need to find friends who can store, you, you know, share a storage space with you so you can leave most of your stuff and bring it back. Okay, um, thank you. Those who are going on the ship, it's a little bit different. They can put their stuff, they're going to put a majority of their stuff on the ship to go with them and then the rest they can store in a similar fashion as what I'm kind of recommending to you. Ah, okay. Thank you. All right. I don't want to butcher this person's name who raised their hand. So please go ahead. Gulian, K. Gulian, Julian. Hi. Uh, yes, it's Karen. <laughs> okay, Karen. All right. Hi. Um, My daughter just had a quick question which was um if she wants to make a salad in her room is she able to bring knives on into her dorm no knives um what's her major uh mechanical engineering so with license or without with license um so licensed students will have the ability to have like a folding knife uh, which is part of what they carry to be on the ship and do ship ops and things like that. 
So if she wants to use her, you know, Swiss knife, holding Swiss knife type of gizmo, she'll have access to that because she'll um, be buying a Leatherman's, you know, you, you know, I don't know what they're called. They're, it's like a Swiss knife uh, contraption or my God, I don't know what I'm talking about, but it's a Leatherman's, um, but no knives otherwise, not a kitchen knife, not allowed. Okay. That, well, that was it. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Butter knife is okay. I have another question. Yes, Michael. This this, this isn't related to um to the meal plans or anything like that. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, is uh international business and logistics a dual major? I wasn't able to fully confirm that. Business administration ma uh, major, single. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thank you. Yeah, you can get a minor in law or math or. Um, something like that, but by itself, it's a business administration major. Any other questions? No, thank you so much, Vinita. This was very... Of course, of course. Um, I'm excited to see you on Thursday, same place, same link, and um, have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.